Explore with us the costliest blunders in construction, from bridges tragically falling due to engineering mistakes to skyscraper windows crashing down. This is Superstructures, uncovering the world's most expensive construction mishaps. Let's dive into the fourth spot on our list, the tragic Mississippi Bridge Collapse. These incidents are often caused by engineering and construction mistakes or a lack of upkeep. The I-35W Mississippi River Bridge collapse on August 1, 2007 was a horrifying example. After four decades in operation, the bridge crumbled into the river, causing over 100 cars and 18 workers to plunge 40 meters. This disaster, one of Minnesota's biggest tragedies, claimed 13 lives and injured 145. The bridge had been classified as structurally deficient, needing urgent repairs. However, a critical flaw was also discovered. The gusset plates, crucial for joining different sections, were only half as thick as needed. The investigation revealed additional stress factors, like nearly 300 tons of construction equipment and rush hour traffic. The thin plates couldn't bear the load, leading to the collapse. Lawsuits followed, with $52 million paid to victims. To prevent such tragedies, Minnesota allocated $2.5 billion for a bridge improvement program, dedicated around $250 million to rebuild the collapsed bridge. Let's move on to number three, the skyscraper that nearly led to disaster, the AON Center. Erected in the 1970s at a cost of approximately $120 million, this Chicago giant stood as the tallest building in the city at 346 meters. Beyond its impressive height, the facade made of Italian marble slabs gave it a distinctive look. However, this unique choice turned out to be a costly and dangerous error. The thin marble slabs attached to the facade began cracking shortly after installation. Just weeks after the tower's opening, a shaggy marble block weighing around 160 kilograms, equivalent to a full-grown lion, came loose and fell, crashing into a nearby skyscraper roof. Thankfully, it didn't hit the street, and no injuries occurred. Concerns arose about the tower's structural stability, but architects assured that the issue was confined to the facade, which they secured to prevent further incidents. Over the years, temperature changes in Chicago caused the thin marble slabs to bow outward and crack again. In 1985, steel straps were added as a temporary solution. But five years later, the entire exterior cladding had to be replaced. The marble slabs were substituted with much thicker granite panels, costing $80 million, nearly a quarter of the skyscraper's total expense when adjusted for inflation. The AON Center wasn't the only 1970s tower facing issues of objects falling from its facade. In the same era, other buildings faced comparable issues, such as Chicago CNA Center completed a year earlier. The CNA Center's windows began cracking due to thermal expansion, posing a threat to pedestrians below. In 1999, a tragic incident occurred when a window on the 29th floor cracked and led to the death of a 37-year-old woman. A lawsuit ensued, resulting in an $18 million settlement and all the building's windows were replaced. Similar problems emerged in a Boston skyscraper completed in 1976, the famous John Hancock Tower where windows started cracking due to thermal expansion. Some windows fell, crashing onto the pavement. To address the issue, over 10,000 windows had to be replaced, and the streets around the high-rise were closed during high winds. Moving on to number two, San Francisco's radioactive problem. The former Navy Yard in San Francisco, which once housed the largest U.S. facility for nuclear research, became a site for the city's significant redevelopment project. In 2000, the U.S. Navy aimed to clean up the radioactive waste at the shipyard, envisioning plans for over 12,000 new housing units, parks, and offices. Tetra Tech, a company, received $250 million in cleanup contracts from 2006 to 2012, while other contractors were assigned to build homes concurrently. However, the project faced a major setback due to allegations for cleanup fraud. Whistleblowers emerged in 2012, accusing Tetra Tech of falsifying cleanup data by using samples from clean areas and presenting them as contaminated soil. Two years later, Tetra Tech admitted to the wrongdoing, attributing it to individual employees. The U.S. Navy agreed to a revised plan to address the remaining contamination, and the first land section was handed over to developers to begin construction. 
In 2016, over 200 homes were developed and handed over to residents, marking a significant step in the shipyard's redevelopment. However, an independent review of Tetra Tech's data revealed a more extensive falsification of soil tests than initially believed. Almost half of the earlier cleanup work was found to be based on false information. A subsequent review by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in 2018 revealed that the Navy had downplayed the extent of the problem. In light of these findings, the development was indefinitely halted. Over $1 billion had been spent on the shipyard's cleanup by this point, with more than 350 housing units sold for around a $1 million each. The project's suspension led to a barrage of lawsuits, seeking up to $30 billion. Homeowners sued developers who then sued Tetra Tech. Tetra Tech in turn sued the U.S. Navy and the Environmental Protection Agency, alleging a lack of evidence. The situation turned out to be even more dire than initially assessed. As of 2022, a San Francisco grand jury revealed a new challenge for the shipyard. The efficacy of previous cleanups is jeopardized by rising groundwater attributed to climate change. Past strategies assumed that dry areas would remain unaffected, but increasing groundwater could mobilize dormant contaminants in the soil. Consequently, the project confronts significant delays. Originally, most housing units were expected to be delivered to homeowners by 2020, but the majority of transfers are now postponed until at least 2026. The project's future is uncertain, and the cleanup mistakes have rendered at least a billion dollars spent on it futile. For the final project in this video, we delve into another tragic bridge collapse, ranking as one of the world's most devastating. At number one, we examine South Korea's appalling bridge disaster involving the Songsu Bridge. Constructed in 1977 over the Han River, connecting Seoul Songdong and Gongnam districts, the bridge faced repeated overloading. This led to a catastrophic collapse on October 21, 1994 with a complete slab falling more than 50 meters into the water. A car, a van, and a bus were caught in the collapse, while additional cars plunged off the edge into the river. The incident claimed the lives of 32 people, with 29 passengers on the bus losing their lives. An immediate investigation was initiated to determine the causes. Originally designed for vehicles under 36 tons, over the years, increasing urban sprawl led to heavier traffic, allowing loads exceeding 47 tons per vehicle. The primary cause identified was a lack of wielding work on the steel trusses of the suspension structure, resulting in rust and overall structural deterioration. Furthermore, the tragic collapse was exacerbated by inadequate maintenance, despite numerous warnings that went unheeded. This neglect, combined with the structural issues, led to the devastating incident. Following the accident, seven city officials responsible for bridge maintenance faced arrest, and the city mayor was compelled to resign. Although the Songsu Bridge collapse was the largest in Seoul, it wasn't the first in South Korea, with at least eight similar incidents since the 1970s, including three on the Han River. Faced with public outcry, the government initiated an emergency inspection program for bridges nationwide. Simultaneously, plans to repair the Songsu Bridge were implemented, but structural weaknesses rendered repairs impossible. Consequently, the bridge had to be demolished and rebuilt, with the new structure completed three years after the collapse, designed to bear a resemblance to the original. The memories of that fateful morning in 1994 linger among the residents of Seoul. If you found this video intriguing, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Superstructures. Explore our captivating stories from around the world. Stay tuned for more exciting content. Until the next video, Goodbye!